All right, this is section 3.8, derivatives of inverse functions. And so one way that we first learned how we could tell if two functions were inverses of each other is we could graph the line y equals x, and it cut right in between the two functions. But if you were actually applying the inverse of a function, let's do a little reminder. So if you had f of x equals 1 half x plus 1, and I want to find the inverse of f of x. Well, the first thing we did is we changed f of x to a y, and then we switched x and y so switch, oh, I don't know why I wrote a 2 there, <laughs> 1, switch x and y, and then solve for y. So I'm going to have x minus 1 equals 1 half y, and then multiply both sides by 2, and I get my inverse. And typically we wrote that y as f inverse of x. So this is something that you should be familiar with that you've already done before. Now if I take the derivative of my original function, which was 1 half x plus 1, that just simply gives me 1 half. If I take my derivative of my inverse, which is 2x minus 2, notice what happens here is they are actually reciprocals of each other. And so this is a very key. Which this definition that says the slopes, the actual slopes of the f of x and the inverse of x are actually reciprocals of each other. And we can see the derivatives, because the derivative is the slope, in theorem 3 that says if we want to find the inverse for a particular function, all we have to do is actually take 1 over the derivative of the inverse. And then these down here are how you would actually evaluate. So if I had something, for example, like f of x equals x squared, and I only care about positive values, well, my f inverse would be the square root of x. How did I find that? I did my whole y equals x squared, switch places, take square root of both sides, and because x has to be greater than 0, I didn't have to do the plus and minus. Well, if I take the derivative of my original function of x squared, I get 2x. If I take the derivative of my inverse, I get 1 over derivative, <laughs> 1 over 2 square root of x. And by theorem 3, this says that I can actually find the derivative of the inverse, and I'll use the same letters that they used in the theorem, by taking 1 over the derivative of the inverse, which if I plug in my inverse here, which is the square root of x, you can see that I get the same thing, I actually get this value back. So this makes it nice that I don't have to go through all these steps. Now in my math lab they're going to want you to find inverses, but I don't actually have to 
If I use this theorem and I have something like f of x equals x cubed minus 2, if I find the derivative, that's just 3x squared, and by theorem 3 I can find the derivative of the inverse just by writing 1 over 3x squared. So it makes it nice, even though, like I mentioned in my math lab, they're going to want you to actually find the inverses, but it makes it nice that you can certainly check your answers. Now also, if let's say we wanted to evaluate this function at x equals 2, the derivative of my original function, well, the derivative is 3x squared, and I want to evaluate it at 2. And so this would simply be just plugging in 2, and I get 12. Therefore, if I wanted to evaluate the inverse, then I just simply do 1 over and I want to evaluate this also at 2. I do 1 over 3 times 2 squared, which notice is the reciprocal of my original function. So again, this theorem 3 gives you a nice little shortcut of how to find the derivative of the inverse for a particular... If I had f of x equals e to the x, Hopefully you remember the inverse of e to the x is ln of x. So in other words, this inverse is ln of x. Well, if I use this theorem and I want to find the inverse derivative, then that says I can write it as 1 over e to my inverse, which I just said my inverse is ln of x, and hopefully you kind of remember if I take e and raise it to the ln of x, I simply get 1 over x. So what this is, is an actual definition, therefore the derivative of ln of x is simply 1 over x, and we need to always remember the chain rule, times the derivative, in this case of x, which is just 1. So this is a definition that you need to know. And so if I want to know what the derivative of ln of 2x is, then it's 1 over what's in parentheses times the derivative of what's in parentheses. So the derivative of 2x would just be 2 over 2x. And as you can see, if there's only one term here, I'm going to still get 1x. But if I have something like ln of x squared plus 3, I take this derivative 1 over the inside parentheses and then multiply times the derivative of inside the parentheses. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative, of course, of 3 is a constant is 0. And thus we get our final answer. And so we have our definitions here that says the derivative of ln of u is just 1 over u du dx, because remember in the chain rule, or the derivative of ln of just one value in here, absolute value of x, is 1 over x. So next we'll do these a to the, a to the u and log base a of u derivatives.